So joining me in front of the camera once again is the very delightful Paul Alcorn from Tom's Hardware. Hey. Hi, Paul. Hey, how's it going? Glad to be back. <laughs> and what we've got for you today is a worldwide exclusive. That's right. What's your minimum specification? Well, shucks, the cloud is here, but which cloud do you trust? Manage your infrastructure with Linode, the biggest independent cloud services provider. Linode offers double the database performance per data than the big four, and now enhances it further with new NVMe-backed block storage. Spin up a game server, website, personal VPN, or something more bespoke today with a free $100 60-day credit at linode.com slash techdeppotato. So if you follow my Twitter account, Paul's Twitter account, or right. maybe even Tom's Hardware, you should go like and subscribe over at Tom's Hardware. You yep. may have already seen something that we've posted, and uh, the best way to describe it is Intel has accidentally leaked one of its future products. Correct. So there was a large wafer uh, that they were presenting as Raptor Lake down there in the booth. You know, as usual, whenever they put out a wafer of a, a new chip, we're, we're very keen to get over there and, and start examining it. We had already seen an unfinished wafer of Raptor Lake in Israel. Yep. Just just a few weeks ago, we were both there. That, that, yeah, that was actually two weeks ago. So just for clarification, right here we're at Intel Innovation. Please welcome Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger. Welcome all. In San Jose. In San Jose. So here we are two weeks later, <laughs> and we see what is a finished die. It's definitely different because you can see the gloss on it. The other die was... It has a diffraction was, pattern, so it has the upper metal layers. Yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It, it has a nice sheen to it, and, which makes it very hard to photograph. So we're playing around with it, and Ian remarks, that does not look like Raptor Lake. <laughs> So, so, so this is on a section, you can probably see us behind us, you know, there's stuff that they're doing for demos. This was a demo station showcasing 13th Gen Raptor Lake, which is to be launched later this year. Yes. And we already know it's an 8 plus 16 die design, 8P cores, 16 E cores. For a total of 24 cores. And 32 threads. Yes. We've seen images of what the die should look like for quite a while now. And, you yep. know, it's older lake plus, a, uh, uh, plus 8 more E cores. This was not that. This looks like Ice Lake server. And I, I initially remarked, that's Ice Lake server, didn't I? Correct, yes. And then the booth personnel set out to prove us wrong because they also then became very confused. Because when you look at the design, it's clear. That is not Raptor Lake for the desktop. That is not, definitely not. Because it's a long horizontal die. You can see how the cores are aligned. And when you look at the wafer, you can see the design etched onto it. So... Raptor Lake and consequently Old Lake, which we're very familiar with, is a long, thin, rectangular piece of silicon. Correct. So that has a particular design when you look on the wafer, you can essentially see how it's laid out. This is a lot more square, so that was one giveaway that led me Correct. to think it was definitely not Raptor Lake. But also, the way that Ice Lake server chips are laid out, if you're familiar, is you have cores in a 2D mesh array. And Correct. it's very distinct in those segments where the cores are, you can see where the memory controllers are. Um, yeah, you kind of you can't make them out, but you can definitely tell what's a core and what isn't, because it's a very, it's a repeated unit, right? You repeat it forty times over the die for the Ice Lake Forty XCC Extreme Silicon. Correct, and they're arranged in a grid, almost like a checkerboard, yeah. which is much different than Alder Lake, which is just two rows yeah. of of cores. So, as you were saying, the people at the booth they were said, no, this is this is Raptor Lake, or we've been told it's Raptor Lake. But And so, again, to prove us wrong, they turned the wafer over. The wafer was out on its own, but it was on its carry case, if you're yeah. familiar with what a wafer carry case looks like. And uh, I think your photo was better than mine of this. I'll show, yes. I'll show you B-roll of it, and don't worry, I'll on water. The back of the, <laughs> yes, so on the back of the wafer, the sticker clearly says 34-core Raptor Lake. So it says Raptor Lake S. S, right? So desktop. S in our parlance means desktop. So we would, if somebody said S to us, we'd instantly think 8 plus 16. Correct. The desktop core. However, next to Raptor Lake S, just after it, it says 34C. Typically means 34 cores. Correct. And I went, huh? Because firstly, S and 34 core don't go. Yep. If it was workstation, I'd expect it to be WS or yep. something similar. And then 34 core. Now, we don't, Ice Lake doesn't have a 34 core skew. It has Correct. a 40 or a 28. And then, so I flipped it back over, 
and counted how many rows of yep. what looked like the course. So I will say one thing that I haven't told you, which I've actually gone back and on the photo and looked is there are f um, five rows of five. Mm -hmm. And then you have three on either side in between um, the memory controllers. Yeah, it appears to be a quad memory controller. But then there are also three around the edge of the die mm -hmm. that look like cores. So there's 31 in the middle and three on the edge. What the F does that mean? I don't know. Right, that's, that's, that's the correct answer. I don't know either. Yes, yes, that is definitely different. I did notice those three along the edge of the die, and that is definitely not a standard placement. You know, when we look at, I mean, if you want to get in the weeds and you're looking at things like ice lake uh, dies and, and things of that nature, we've seen Intel integrate. Um, you know, they have the UPI connections and there'll be various blocks of them. And then, you know, at UPI times is for die to die for multiple yeah. sockets. So two chips can speak together. And those are kind of like PCIe express links and they'll repurpose those and use them for different mm -hmm. things. These are the type of blocks and memory controllers, IO. That's what we're used to seeing around the edge of a die because that's frankly where yep. it belongs um, because it's shorter communication latency. But here it's, um, it's not different. That. It's not that. Um, so I will say though, because they, so Raptor Lake is P cores and E cores. This what chip is purely P cores. That's, that's a lot of performance. So that's a lot of performance. But in the server space, we know that's a purely the Sapphire Rapids, for example, is going to be a purely P core product. Correct. Um, Sapphire Rapids based on the Golden Cove cores, not the Raptor Cove cores. Slight variation there. So the fact that this was laid out the way it is, and Intel doesn't have a workstation product, at least in that range. They have the entry-level workstation, yes. and they have the mobile workstation. And they did say today that they will have Raptor Lake to address some workstation stuff, but we were thinking that's more of the typical entry-level, like we see with Alder Lake. They have, you know, Alder Lake with ECC support and vPro, but it's a yeah. desktop chip. Yeah, I mean... Know, workstations. It, I, I asked the guy in charge of desktop and workstation, I was like, your, your, your title has workstation in it, you know, does that mean we're expecting a, a essentially a future workstation platform? Because it's a market that Intel hasn't played in for a long time, and there's demand for it. And we were told that the workstation team used to be under the data center group, DC, what they call DCAI. It used to be called DCG. It's now been moved under the client computing group, CCG, um, which we're very familiar with. That happened nine months ago. There have been some internal changes, and you, know, it, you can talk about leaks about what may have been a Xeon W yep. workstation type stuff, which is where SPR, Intel put this. you know, Sapphire Rapids. There's <sighs> been talk of that, you know, that Sapphire Rapids might come to a NHEDT type <laughs> platform or workstation. But then all of a sudden, here we have a 34 core Raptor. Raptor, like, Raptor that, not Cove, so, uh, yeah. not um, not Golden Cove. So it has Correct. the double double L2 cache. It has the better branch predictors. And then on top of that, you know, one thing that's interesting is the mesh. So we saw that the last time. And I think the only time that we've seen a mesh interconnect on the desktop was an HEDT platform, Skylake X. And yes. Skylake X has meshes, how they communicate. Just to be clear, a standard Intel desktop chip uses a ring bus mm -hmm. to communicate. It's extremely fast. It's low latency. The problem is, is it doesn't, it isn't as scalable. So when they want to scale up to higher core counts, sometimes they will employ a, met, a, a excuse me, either a bi-directional ring, which is like a ring on steroids. It goes two directions. So technically, they're all bi-directional, yeah. but sometimes they, you know, they double it from or one ring to two. They double a ring, yeah, yeah, excuse me. So. They doubled ring, excuse me. Or they will go to a, a mesh. Um, a mesh has some trade-offs. With Skylake X, we saw a little bit of reduced gaming performance in some titles with the mesh. Um, it always you know, depends but, which cores are talking to the memory at any one yeah. time because it's a very... It's a variable latency. The ring bus is very it, predictable. It's very predictable. Yeah. With a mesh, you don't necessarily know. So I will say, because I'll show again pictures of, pictures of the wafer, the spaces for the memory controllers are there, which we yep. would expect. However, Intel's not being clear about how many memory controllers are in each of those segments, whether it's one or two. That's correct. Because so this this processor looked like it's either a four channel or an eight channel. This workstation, so perhaps I'd expect four. Though, have, however, Threadripper Pro exists. We have and DDR5, which is technically... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 two I, channels. Well, I mean, to be fair, 64-bit, I, I, okay. Yes. Yeah, that's, 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 the right, that's, that's the right answer, though. Um, I, I couldn't tell by looking at it whether it was, uh, you know, 64-bit uh, or 128-bit. Yeah, one I couldn't of those tell segments. you either. So there's a lot of questions here. It's clear that Intel didn't mean to have this 
what I think has happened is somebody has been at the office and say, we need a Raptor Lake wafer, a Raptor Lake desktop wafer to showcase alongside the Raptor Lake desktop demo we had. And they've literally said, oh, Raptor Lake S, picked it up, gone out of the office, put it on the show floor. Correct. They were surprised. They themselves were well, confused. The, per- the, people on the, boo- the people on the show floor with the wafer weren't the ones who bought it from the office. Yes. It was somebody else. And they uh, did give us the name of the person who brought it from the office, but we won't share it because they're probably going to give you some trouble. Well, it's 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 um, <laughs> so uh, we we saw this. We then parted ways. We both went to our rooms. I got a call from Paul saying, "Can you confirm a couple of things for me?" And I'm like, "Dude, you haven't posted yet, have you?" And he's like, "Yeah, I posted ten minutes ago." Yeah, uh, I was writing still it, because because I kind of wanted to go tomorrow morning and actually get a much better photo. Now that we're doing this, and my aim is to get this uploaded as soon as possible. Chances are it's not going to be there in the morning Yeah, anymore. yeah, they're probably going to take the die out of there. My bad. But, <laughs> hey, you know, we haven't covered shows in person for a long time. A show like this with booths, mm. a lot of booths, at least I haven't. Um, you know, we're, we're just getting back to traveling, and, you know, this reminds us why we do it. I mean, it's... You're, so, you're, so I've been speaking to the uh, media and comms here, and they're saying so many press are just happy with remote, and especially, you know, the YouTubers that don't come to these events unless they can guarantee content. Whereas the traditional written press, they come regardless of what content they can produce. And, and this I think, is why. I, I think it's been a while <laughs> since there's been a significant scoop like this. At it least. has been a long time, even before travel stopped for the pandemic. You know, mm. I've done a million shows. And I've had some good gets over the years, believe me. But this is definitely <laughs> this is among a highlight. the top. Yes, <laughs> this, this is, is a highlight. highlight for sure. I mean, come on. Yeah. Somebody made a pretty monumental mistake. Um, the you know, is, maybe it, they plan for us to find it, but I'm sure that they would expect that most people wouldn't even know. The, so. the thing is, this is this is a two second mistake. That wafer's probably been there all day as well. Yeah, and, and nobody's noticed. And nobody's all the press that have come up, nobody's noticed. Mm-hmm. And we were literally there at 7 p.m. as the show floor was closing. That's correct. Yes. We were the last people to see that demo, that booth for the day, see that wafer. Yeah. I, so, I, I, I guess we're never invited back to a show again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, tomorrow we're definitely going to learn a lot more. I'm going to ask some targeted questions. I'm sure we'll be receiving some communications about this um, <laughs> either way. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we will learn a lot more. Mm-hmm. I, I, this is not the last that we've heard of this. I guarantee that these, these, the, the folks at Intel aren't spinning up an entire wafer <laughs> for kicks. Yeah. This is definitely in process, and it's coming to market. I mean, that's a yeah. finished wafer. It's not a, you know. Well, I mean, so they always take a few wafers off the production line to show at events just to have around the office. So this isn't a wafer that's going to go back into production. But if they've done one, they've done at oh, least yeah, 25, they've done, yeah. they've done at least 1,000. Yeah. and Intel so, does volume. That was a big message today. In, Intel yeah, yeah, does volume. That, 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 is their, that is their thing. They do volume. You know, at their peak, they've produced almost a million processors per day. People forget that. The, the scale of... Intel is pretty surprising now, but one two million wafers a year, I think two two and a half million twelve yes. inch wafers a year. It's crazy. You, anyway, yeah. But, but let's. What, what so? What do you think this? What does this do for the competition with AMD? This is uh, okay. So th- thirty four core. That it says th- thirty four C. There's three cores around the edge. We don't know what they are. Yep. Maybe it's a twenty eight or a thirty core part. You know, yep. they basically disable the cores in order to get it to yield, to get it out, because it's still going to be Intel. It's a pretty seven. large die. I, mean, I should have made it's, it. it. It's probably about 400 square mil. Yeah. Maybe slightly smaller. So that but, means yield, you know, there can be defect problems there. Right. Defect so it's, it, it's either going it, to, it's either a 28 or a 32 core. 28 would be along the same lines of, you know, the server CPUs, the Skylake and the Cascade and yep. the ICE. 28 was always the most popular for those three generations. So it will be competing against the Threadripper Pro. 32 core, Correct. and obviously we're going to have Genoa and Sapphire Rapids coming out soon. And This in- is badly needed for Intel. Intel basically was run out of the HEDT market Just for by Threadripper. And yes, yeah. so even if they don't win, they need to come Something. back, yes. so it, The problem I think they're going to have is convincing the OEM partners, uh, the Gigabyte servers, the Supermicros, yes. the Asus's, to build boards again in they have to have a roadmap for this and they have to have the client base to support it. Because yeah. I know those three companies were getting kind of tired of just doing the one-off boards. They didn't want to do many of them. So unless Look either, at in, the 3175, the what, X? X uh, yeah, yes. Skylake the, the, X28 yeah, core. When you look at these insane $2,000 motherboards, the Dominus Extreme and things of that nature, and you realize 
hey, that's a one-off board, and it's almost certainly... 1,500 units worldwide, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's a very low volume. They're not making much money, if at all. Yeah, no margin on it. It's probably subsidized by Intel. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking that. Just for the sake of having a Halo product. You know, these these types of things are are labor-intensive, resource-intensive. You've got to get your your good engineers over there working Mm -hmm. on things that aren't particularly profitable. Intel will have to commit... Um, mm-hmm. If they intend to bring this out in volume, but as Ian says, Intel thinks volume. Yeah. So, uh, and, and to be honest, they it. have gone down this this far down the path before with product, and then cancelled it. Yes. It has yeah. happened before. Um, so, and I fully suspect Intel won't actually say the fact that we're doing this now. I don't think Intel's going to say a peep about it until next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. The, the, this is the design cycles in the semiconductor world. You know, yeah. they are they are long. And, you know, here we are talking about OEMs designing mm. and bringing up boards and things of that nature. These, th- this is a very long process, which is how we learn about <laughs> these things early. So It's, yeah. So I, I'd be happy to be surprised if they were to come out and say, okay, we want to tell you about this now. Hey, CES, uh, tw- you know, CES this year, next year, however you want to look at it, the next CES which I will actually be at. Yeah, Hallelujah. first week of January. Yes, yes, first week of January. We are, Who knows? I mean, this would be a great... Yeah, this would be great for whatever yes. keynote presentation There you doing, go, so. keynote. Gelsinger drops the... Workstation for consumers. Yes, yeah. <laughs> let's call it HEDT and get back to... Yeah. Know, we'll see. We, we prefer the good old days, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Great to have you Thank on again. Thank you, man. It was great to, uh, to, <laughs> to, to, to get to get... a get-together. We've done a few of these events, more than a few together. Yeah. So, it's, you know, working for different publications, of course, but, you know, we've, we've ran across a lot of things over the years, and this is definitely this is among good. the highlights. Yeah. This is a good one. Yep. Awesome. Uh, Thanks. Right.